wanted to just briefly comment on item C, which is the resolution to establish a Remembrance and Reconciliation Commission. I appreciate the work that I've done with Councilmember Jawando and Councilmember Rice would also be a lead sponsor. Um, he is uh, out of the country and uh, did get back to me in time to let me know, but not in time for this agenda. Uh, so let the record note that he is also a go lead sponsor and thanks to the co-sponsors here. And uh, we are joined today in the audience by several residents or activists who are working hard on this issue, Tony Cohen uh, with the Button Farm and Minari Foundation and Will Schwartz with the Maryland Lynching Project. And uh, hopefully soon we'll have the arrival of Director Jim Stowe from the Office of Human Rights. Um, the goal of this initiative is to support the community dialogue and bring the agencies together in a way that is necessary to support the county's participation in the Equal Justice Institute's memorial project. The Equal Justice Institute, uh, founded by Brian Stevenson, has a foundation in Montgomery, Alabama that uh, is dedicated to bringing forward the history of America's struggle with uh, racism, slavery, segregation, lynching, racial terrorism, and bringing that dialogue forward to achieve reconciliation and understanding. And um, I'm interested in this for many, many reasons, but um, I just thought I would share a little bit of the context from my vantage, which is to say that I, I think America has never owned up to its history. And uh, when you hear Brian Stevenson talk, he, he will describe how he's traveled in Germany and after World War II, that country went through a process to own up to what it had done and to repudiate um, what had happened as a result of that country's uh, actions. And as a result of that process, if you go to Germany, according to Brian Stevenson, there are no memorials to the Nazi party. There are no um, places where the bravery of you know, Nazi soldiers are extolled or the, uh, the actions of that regime are, are, are held up as an example. Um, America never did that after the Civil War. Uh, and in fact, we took a different path and we're still reeling, I think, from the consequences of our failed efforts at reconstruction. Um, I'll never forget as a young child, my best friend's family, they had a, a, a picture of Robert E. Lee on the wall. And uh, I didn't know who that was or I'd heard a little bit about the Civil War, but you know, from the age of four or five, you know, it was conveyed to me that Robert E. Lee was a person suitable to hang a portrait of on your, on your wall and that his actions leading the War of the Rebellion were you know, acceptable in polite company. And uh, that had a, I'm sure, had a, had a consequence, but that kind of learning is an experience that people in this country have over and over and over. And you'll still see, it, you know, in places where they should not be, uh, memorializations to the Confederacy. I, I thought a lot about that when I visited the Gettysburg battlefield. Uh, you'll see it here in Maryland at our, our Confederate at our battlefields, memorials to the Confederacy. And of course, uh, you'll see it, you, you, you would have seen it very recently right across the street. Um, we had until very recently a statue to the Confederacy right here in Rockville. Um, I was recently reading the biography of, autobiography of Ulysses S. Grant. And um, at the end there is a, an appendix uh, describing how uh, the effort around reconciliation devolved into an agreement, a, a peace among whites that left blacks behind. And uh, how the understanding of Grant was changed over time to view him as a failed president, as someone afflicted by corruption and, and as a drunk um, 
And that's part of the rewriting of history and the changing of memory of the post-Civil War era. And it was Frederick Douglass who said that what is happening now is a peace among whites that is, has left behind blacks. So we have to, I think, go back and understand that history and, and see how slavery led to segregation and Jim Crow, which has led to incarceration, and feel the urgency of addressing the problems today of equity and, and incarceration and poverty, and do what was never done generations ago, and try to achieve some kind of community dialogue and recognition. And that's the big ambition of the Montgomery, Alabama's Equal Justice Institute and the dialogue that it seeks to foster. So with the resolution, the Office of Human Rights Director Stowe would, will staff, provide staff support to a commission that will bring together not only our schools and our Arts and Humanities Commission and our college and our county government, but also community leaders, activists from many walks of life to, to create that community dialogue and to help us understand and achieve remembrance and reconciliation. And ultimately, and it may take years for this to happen, it would result in, if we are successful, bringing a memorial that is part of the museum in Montgomery, right here to Montgomery County. There, there were three lynchings, at least three lynchings in Montgomery County. Uh, and in two of the instances, the victim was abducted from the county jail, uh, which was probably right here on the property of this county office complex, uh, this Montgomery County Council office complex. Um, and the, the, the men who were taken from here were lynched nearby, proximate to, to Rockville. And, um, and another one happened in the Poolsville area. So um, you know, we'll be learning more about that through the process of hopefully locating the locations, identifying markers, taking soil samples, and then interacting with the foundation. So um, that is what the, the effort here, we're just, we're just beginning this and it will be a multi-year effort and um, it will take time, but uh, it is important work. And again, I wanna thank my colleagues for their support and the community leaders for helping to make this happen.